Mox on hit here with a deep dive breakdown on Witchfire for Last Epoch Warlock. Through hours of testing, we have broken the code and figured out the scaling for Grimhilda's domain node and how exactly Witchfire is scaled. Witchfire is an ailment that does 300 fire and 300 necrotic damage over time. It is accessed through 5 points in the Ashen One nodes in the Warlock Tree. It lasts 12 seconds, does not stack, and is activated by gaining either Ignite or Damned Overload. It scales rather effectively actually. We get very good benefits from several different nodes, but we'll break this down one step at a time. Our initial base damage is 600 damage over 12 seconds. That's 300 fire and 300 necrotic. We did find that it does scale kind of like the text suggests on the Ashen One and Grimhilda's domain. It is just hard to decipher. We have two general ways to scale this spell though. One is increased tags, and the other is through more multipliers that are inherent to the text on the spell. The increased tags for Witchfire are Increased damage, increased damage over time, increased elemental damage over time, increased fire damage, and increased necrotic damage. Sadly, we get no benefits from any flat damage or increases to spells or curses. Next is more multipliers. Witch fire gets 15% more for every 100% damn chance you have, and 5% more for every 100% ignite chance you have, with 5 out of 5 nodes in Grimhilda's domain. This is true for one point in Grimhilda's Domain as well, giving us only 3% more for Damned and 1% more for Ignite. This is universal for Global Chance to Ignite, Chance on Damned, Chance on Hit with Fire and Necrotic spells, and even Soul Fire, which counts only towards Ignite. Before we get into the equation, if you are new to ARPGs, or you have never done damage calculations, I strongly encourage you to go over to my Bleed Warlock Part 1 video where I go into detail on the damage equations and how increased damage and more multipliers work in the game. I did notice something odd about the math for this though. When balancing the equation, it appears that it does not count the Ignite and Dam to separate instances for mole multiplication. Because of this, we have to take our initial 1.0 base and split it for each multiplier for the fact that it is 300 fire and 300 necrotic. This makes sense though. You wouldn't have the dam scaling the fire portion, or vice versa. Because of this, we are adding 0.5 base to each of our multipliers. So, to break this down further now, if we have 445% more dam chance on hit with our gear and passives, then our more multiplier would be 4.95 times 15 for the 15%, giving us a total of 74.25% more multiplier. If we do the same for our Ignite Chance at 113%, then we get a multiplier of 1.63 times 5 for the 5%, giving us 8.15 times more multiplier. If we add those together with 5 in Grimhilda's Domain and all of my gear, 113% Ignite Chance and 445% Dam Chance, we get a total of 82.4 times more multiplier. Now, to complete the equation and put it all together, we have our 600 base damage, that is 300 fire and 300 necrotic, times all of our instances of increased damage at 270% general damage, 88 fire damage, 88 necrotic damage. We then take our total increased damage for our trees, which came out to 393%, and we get 3.93 times multiplier with our increased damage tags. 0.5 times base multiplier, plus all of our more damage multipliers for necrotic chance at 445, which is 4.95 times 15 equals 74.25 plus 113 ignite chance, which is 1.63 times 5 equals 8.15 for a total of 82.4 times more multiplier equals 194,299 damage. This is total, which we'll then divide by 24 because it is a 12 second duration and we get two ticks per second. Ailments and damage over time ticks at the rate of two times per second in last epoch. When our math is all done, with five nodes in Grimhilda's domain allocated, our damage was 8,095 per tick. In game, this was averaging about eight to nine K 
with ramping as time goes on. The ramp up makes the math tough, but if we assume a steady and constant increase, our initial hit of witch fire is right in line. If we change our equation to match the 3% damned multiplier and the 1% ignite multiplier for only 1 out of 5 points in Grimhilda's domain, we can see that our damage matches again. Our damage, which was 1,619 per tick, is right on line with our average 1.6 to 1.7k in game, with the ramping up as time goes on. When we add more gear and affixes, such as increased fire damage, necrotic damage, ignite chance, more dam chance, and fire more multiplier, and a lot of damage over time and elemental damage over time, we get a pretty healthy tick of about 28,000. Again, this is before any other more multiplier or buffs from passive skills or gear that trigger while we cast. So the good news? It scales, and it actually scales pretty well. But there are some bad things too. First is the 12 second soft cooldown and possibly a 6 second cooldown if you're skilled enough to rotate your igniter damned overload. That's pretty rough though. 12 seconds to wait for this to apply and then have to wait again for those to go on cooldown just to apply another single instance is pretty rough. The other bad news? It's snapshots. You can see some fixed snapshotting in the following video. You will notice that the with gear damage is the exact same as the without gear damage on the same exact monster in the same map. This is due to the snapshotting with our gear as we entered the area. The same is exactly true for testing in the dummies. Now this is just gear though and doesn't include passives or anything else allocated on the tree. We noticed that when removing those and adding those back in the same zone, they did actually adjust the witch fire. We didn't have to reload. But sadly, because this is an issue with gear and skills for snapshotting, this is a massive drawback though, not allowing us any way to scale witch fire with gear or skills while we're channeling. Another criminal thing going on here though, is flame whip from the ignite overload. This skill, with little investment, was doing on average 28,000 damage in a relatively large AoE when you gained Ignite Overload. As we can see in the video, it procs switch fire and then immediately hits. This does cause the small spread, but the issue is that it kills any mobs near it without getting a chance to spread it further on hit, greatly reducing our chance to spread it across the map. The spread as well for only one application of Witchfire usually means that those mobs gaining the Witchfire are going to die pretty quick. For Witchfire to even apply, the monster has to be ignited or damned. And to even proc it, you have to have enough stacks to get damned or ignite overload, meaning the monster is probably going to die too quickly to get any spreads from your hit anyways. So where does this leave us? Well, with a 15 point minimum investment, I have to regrettably suggest that this is just not really good. Witchfire in its current state is not worth scaling. The only option that would make it worth it is if you were going an Ignite and Damned build. But even then, it's still pretty rough. For passive scaling in Monoliths below 400 corruption, it is great for clear. But for true progression, there are far better ways to spend 15 very valuable points on your passive tree for more damage. I truly think that the actual soft cap for Witchfire is about 400 corruption with decent investment and gets exponentially worse for the value you have to invest as you get higher. For full investment as well, you're looking at roughly 28 points, which is hard to come by for any build, unless you are truly dedicated to an Ignite or Damned Ailment build. For the gear 2, we are severely limited on the affix options we have for more multipliers to take Witchfire to the next level. We really only have 4 slots. We have 2 Dam Chance on Helm and Chest, and we have 2 Ignite Chance on a Weapon and Amulet. Outside of that, unless it's a unique gear that has something specifically tied to it, we really miss out on a lot of options. 
We do miss out on a lot of options as well like solid ignite and fire damage over time affixes that the mage has access to. If these truly are the best ways to scale it, they are really hard to justify for most builds as well, competing with some incredibly strong spots, and some very solid support modifiers such as Chaos Bolt Shoot Extra Projectiles and Fishers have increased spirit frequency. I do have a Spreading Flames Witchfire build that I'm currently working on that utilizes Ghost Flame and Spreading Flames to get some pretty solid interaction with Witchfire. If you plan to play a passive investment strategy and you're already running an Ignite or Damned build, then the benefits could actually be argued for the 28 point investment. Most everything used as well to bring it online for your gear gives you actually a really good benefit for Ignite and Damned builds. This can give you a valuable 1.5 more Ignites per hit and 2.3 Damned per hit. I will post the build to the channel soon so you can follow it. A great way they could improve Witchfire would be to change the cooldown dependency of an overload to proc it. This could be done simply by rewording and stating that Witchfire spreads on hit for any fire or necrotic spell as long as you have both Ignite and Damned Overload active. This is a simple solution, still requires a lot of investment in specific nodes, and thematically fits very well considering it's both a fire and necrotic ailment. This scale has been one of my favorite concepts for Warlock, but in its current state it just leaves a lot to be desired. Although it's fun, unique, and neat to build around, it needs some solid changes to make it big leagues. I hope that you have found this video educational and have enjoyed it. If you stayed with me to the end, I want to say thank you. I also want to say thank you to all the new subscribers to the channel and to any new followers on Twitch. Be sure to drop a comment below if you're new here, and be sure to sub for updates, news, guides, gameplay, and updates on when I am live on YouTube and Twitch. I also want to give a special shout out to those in the last Epoch Discord that have helped me figure this one out as well. This took a lot of testing. This took me four tries to make this video because of the changes we found during testing, and it has been a very long process, but one that I have learned a lot from. If you feel like you have figured out anything else that's different from our calculations or anything in here doesn't make sense, please feel free to let me know below. Drop a comment, let me know what you found. I'm happy to correct any mistakes I have made and to learn more about the game. Again, we can always learn something new. Thanks for coming by. May your loot drops be GG. This is Mox on hit and off meta.